Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. Dave Mustaine, 1000% confirmed within the Gibson family of brands. But we actually have photos of these, and one of them shocked me. Let's go ahead and check them out. Our first one here is actually within the Kramer family of brands. So we do indeed have a Kramer version as well as a Gibson version. And it sounds like we're also going to have some Epiphone versions in the future. I was unable to see any type of photos of that. But let's take a look at this thing first. This looks pretty sweet to me. It's a guitar that's, you know, a little bit out of my ordinary. But at the same time, you know, it's still got the string through tail piece. So I'm okay with it on that aspect. I really like the wood grain that's showing through on this particular one. I mean, it's very similar to his old king v style but we're just within a new family of brands unfortunately we don't have like really in-depth detailed specs available yet today it was just that first day where they finally showed us these things without being scribbled out but if i were to guess some sort of a mahogany body with an ebony fretboard looks like is that real mother of pearl inlays they might be pearloid on the actual production ones who knows I think this is really going to help people get drawn to this brand because they've had some cool signature models so far, but I think this is going to be a driving factor for a lot of people because what I see a lot of fans saying in the comment section is, oh man, Gibsons, they're going to be so expensive, the regular Joe can't afford them. And I think that's why they did the whole Kramer thing and maybe the Epiphone, I don't know, that kind of seems redundant to me to do Epiphone and Kramer, but I guess it also depends where they're pricing these things and where they're making them and stuff. Checking out Cesar's Instagram, it looks like, wow, these are made in USA Kramers. That's kind of a big deal. And it also looks like you can get this in an ebony finish. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Will I review one of these? Uh, maybe. So we can finally put to rest that prototype that was made within the Gibson factory. It was this thing right here, not the Gibson version. So we were all kind of thrown for a loop last year. But now let's move over to the Gibson side of things. Here we see that very familiar silver finish, but this is, you know, more so Flying V style, but without the Flying V portion. It's a stop bar tailpiece. That's kind of shocking. I would have imagined that we'd have the string through 58 style. Maybe they'll have different versions or they're trying to switch it up. That way you have a reason to buy one of every single one if you've got the budget for it. Now, maybe it's just because we don't have the pick guard on here or we don't have the string through tailpiece. This V looks oddly long. Like, did they actually change the dimensions of the Flying V? Gibson's never been known for really sharp pointy things, so they've got the rounded off corners, but the output jack location is where Dave's familiar with it. Oh man, how are they going to do that? That'll be interesting to tear apart. But it looks like uh, some sort of a Seymour Duncan signature set of pickups in there, and the regular layout that he likes. Looks like a bound ebony fretboard with very similar inlays there. Man, those inlays... They, they remind me of the Dean logo. <laughs> and then we have our uh, regular Gibson styled headstock. So I was kind of expecting something like this, right? I think we all kind of were based on the rumors and photos that have been leaked. But were you expecting a volute on the back? I wasn't, but I'm super happy that it's there and that it actually looks good. But oh my goodness, I would never in a million years guess this. I am so excited for this one. you will definitely see a review and demo of Green Burst <laughs> and on a production model. It doesn't look like we have any type of binding, but everything else is the same except for the inlays. And I've got to say, not a huge fan of that style inlay just because of it reminds me of a different brand on this brand of guitar. But we get like these coffin shaped inlays. I'm sure they have something to do with the Rust and Peace album or you know, Peace Sells Who's Buying type stuff. But that finish is nuclear. I love it. It's gonna really cause troubles with my green screen, but hey, we can just turn it different colors. I'd like to see like a blue burst version of it as well, but this is what sparked this whole video. I was just gonna leave the Mustaine talking until I could actually get one of these things, but people have been asking for it and this thing made me get excited. I love everything about it, except for I would have probably preferred the string through style, but at the same time, it kind of cleans up the whole look of the guitar. I wonder what other specs might have changed between this one and this one. I can't necessarily see anything, 
But this one looks more regular size proportions. Maybe it's because of that burst versus, you know, all one solid color. But now that I'm looking closer at that color, that's going to be a pretty metallic finish, isn't it? But all black hardware. This is a very non-Gibson Gibson, in my opinion, and I'm digging it. Then I think it was two days ago, Cesar posted this photo where he scratched them all out and said like coming soon or something. They had this strange guitar that nobody could really guess. Some people thought it was like an ES styled instrument. I was pretty convinced it was an acoustic, but I was unsure of what type of model. Here it is. So we've seen this design before in a roundabout way, but it's been modernized. It kind of has almost that slash vermilion burst going on. Not quite, that looks darker to me, but they've decked it out in the uh, Rust in Peace album, Skull Guy. So we've got that on the headstock and that's what's on the pick guard here. It's all chained up as well. But the biggest thing about this one is it is a 24 fret acoustic guitar. Now, apparently this gave Gibson some troubles trying to make this thing. It looks like we also can plug it in and play it, but they had to like change all the bracing up. But in doing that, they're like, hey, maybe this is a good idea that we can use on other guitars. So it seems Gibson's really pumping out the acoustic guitars lately. I, I don't necessarily like covering those on my channel, and I'm not sure if I'll get this one or not, but it does check off the boxes of having something unique, that whole 24 frets. We can use the endoscope to take a look at their bracing and whatnot. So I'll put this one in my maybe pile. Maybe we'll just unbox it and do like a quick little demo or something. But as far as I know, uh, nobody leaked this one. I had no idea that they were gonna do an acoustic. There are a bunch of people saying, oh man, are they going to do a Les Paul? Maybe in the future, maybe in the future. But out of the Vs, I think I like the Kramer the best. Then out of the two Gibson versions here so far, I like the green one the best. And just kind of an interesting acoustic. But let's cover one more topic here. So here is the one photo that we have of the acoustic guitar. It's got his signature on the truss rod cover. I'm sure you can swap that out. But check this out. A black nut. All right, but no fret nibs. I wonder if the Gibson versions will have that or if that is a spec that Mustaine is just so used to that he didn't want on his guitars. I mean, fret nibs sometimes over the years, they can cause issues. They're really just cosmetic appointments anyways. And if you ever have to refret the guitar, they're just a pain in the butt because they mentally anguish you. Should I get rid of them or not? And it's just a real pain in the butt for luthiers to retain them. But that is a, just a small thing that I noticed that's a little bit different here. However, looking at some of these other promotional photos, we can also see a different V. Now this one has what I've been looking for on the other one. It's got that string through style tailpiece. We get the split parallelogram inlays. This is the one that Cesar was, you know, secretly hiding in all of his Instagram posts. My best guess is this is custom shop, whereas these guys are like Gibson USA products or something like that. So this will be some sort of a limited edition release, 30th anniversary, rust in peace or something, who knows. At this time, we don't have official answers, but we're getting close. So that is everything that I can see as of this point in time. Which one are you guys most excited for? I mean, for me, it would be whatever this thing ends up being, because that's cool. The rust in peace limited edition. I wonder how limited it's going to be. And the other ones, they're cool too, but not necessarily as cool as these other ones. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.